morning, everyone. Uh, so I'm wondering if uh, you've had this experience. So I, for me, as a, as a business leader, I try and make it a priority to meet all of the new employees and employees that are in final candidacy. And usually when I meet some of these employees, depending on the role, we often talk about revenue. You may look at different metrics in terms of success. We look at if you work really hard, you can become somebody and, and have that great job. There's a lot of money at the end of the rainbow. You work hard, we compensate. We talk about, depending on the role again, the CARC packages that we have. We look at market share of the organization. We talk about our benefits and we talk about pipeline. Yet, I don't know about you guys, but of recent, I've been experiencing a reaction from some of the candidates that I've been talking to. And it's not what I usually would have expected. Instead, what I get is this very unmotivated, uninspired look. And it's happened to me a few times. And clearly, I know it's not because of me. So I went out and I reached out to some colleagues and I reached out to some business leaders. And actually, what I found was the same thing. And what I heard is we're starting to see the dawn of the age of this new generation called millennials. So let's just check in here for relevance right now. I've got three simple questions. All I need is a simple yes, no answer. All right, so answer yes or no to any of these. Do you remember when the Soviet Union existed? <laughs> yes or no? Can you remember a time before mobile phones, text, and Twitter? Yes or no? And then frankly, the last one is, did you own a VCR? <laughs> yes or no? Well, guess what? If you answered yes to any of these, you're not a millennial. <laughs> and you better pay attention to the next couple of slides. My talk is on this great formatted slide, is basically looking at how do we recruit and retain this new generation of talent. But before we can do that, I think we've got to get to know them a little bit better. So who are these millennials? So if you're born over the, after the 1980s, they are going to be and are the largest generation yet. They're most ethnically and racially diverse. They grew up with technology. They are confident, have high expectations, achievement oriented, and interestingly, by 2020, it's expected that, that they will to make up 50% of the workforce. And in fact, by 2030, they'll make up 75%. Now, I know some of you in this room are going 2030, I'll be retired by then. Hence, reinforcing my point, you're not a millennial. Yet, anytime you have any reading on millennials or even ask for feedback, it seems like they're always getting this bad rap. In a recent survey of 20 hiring managers, 53% said that they had hit difficulty retaining these millennials. And again, feedback has always been they're nar narcissistic, they're not willing to put in the hours, they fail to comply with organizational norms, they feel entitled, they want to be rewarded for participation, and they have unrealistic expectations on career. When we turn the tables and ask millennials, what we hear is that 70% of them want to be entrepreneurs. 20% really don't want to lead large organizations. And in fact, they want to prioritize meaningful work overpay. And interestingly, they feel that they find themselves in a workplace designed by their grandparents, somewhat hierarchical, commanding control, overstructured, and money is not always the incentive. And it was, when I was doing some research around this, I also found a, a statistic that I thought was quite telling, is in a global survey of 7,800 millennials, 63% of them said management attitude, 61% said structure, and 39% said skills and diversity were impediments to innovation. So it clearly shows that there's a dichotomy and that there's a discordance in terms of what they're looking for and what we have to offer. Yet, if you fundamentally believe that people are the greatest asset in your organization and that they will be the biggest contributor to the talent pool, we need to find a motivator to recruit and retain this next talent. And the way I see it, the opportunity is really tapping into that entrepreneurial opportunity. Here you have a group of adaptable, team-oriented, and super creative individuals. It's known, statistics shows, that millennials have skills prior generations don't, specifically around problem solving, dealing with diversity, dealing with complexity, and dealing with ambiguity. They're educated, they're looking to improve, they're really tech savvy, and they're well networked. And it's also known that they're getting more done on an average day than previous generations. So what I wanna share with you is what I think are the 10 commandments of recruiting and retaining millennials. 
Number one, focus on the organizational purpose. Talk about what that societal contribution is versus revenue and, contrib and EBITDA and etc. Highlight corporate responsibility. Show how they can contribute and make it dead clear that what they do, how it helps, not with the bottom line, but again with the purpose of the organization. Make development personal. It's not about the process, it's not about structure, and it's not about filling in templates. It's about the conversation, and as Sylvie said as well, it's about creating mentorship opportunities and coaching. Create leadership opportunities for them. Foster collaboration. Think about it. The education process and education experience that they went through was about team learning. They're really good at collaborating. Create flexible work environments. Allow them to experiment. Let them fail, let them fail fast, and let them fail forward. Tap into that tech savvy, and lastly is reward results. The key on this rewarding results is, it's not about the prize at the end of the journey, it's about incentivizing them throughout the journey. Thank you. Thank you.